Good morning, booktube. I just wanted to hop on and share with you some of the books that I've recently acquired. And um, by recent, I mean within the past month. Uh, so England has just come out of lockdown, uh, which means that we can actually go into non-essential shops. So it's been just really enjoyable going to the local bookstore and having a wander and browsing shelves um, and just spending a real long time in, in there, just back in paradise. Um, so uh, I'll just share with you some of the books that I did buy. Um, some of these are online purchases, but it's no matter. So I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and make a start. So one of the books that I'll start with, I did just finish this book. I will be doing a separate review on it. And I did just um, feature this in my um, most recent weekly reads, but the one that I was really excited for is The Red Prince, John of Gaunt by Helen Carr. If you're familiar with me, you know that I like to read a lot of popular history and uh, medieval biographies. Um, and uh, as soon as I picked this up, I started reading it and uh, I, I did really enjoy it. Um, in the other video that I did on weekly reads, I had said that I'll be doing a separate review and that I didn't rate this as highly as, um, you know, some of the other popular histories that I've read. And I'll explain the reasons for that. Do I recommend this? Yes, definitely. Um, but I'll, I'll explain more of my critical thoughts uh, further in a different video. So yes, that's on, on John of Gaunt, The Red Prince. Um, one of the uh, other books that I was really excited to pick up, and this is one that I did purchase from, from the bookstore itself, um, is Queens of Jerusalem, The Woman Who Dared to Rule by Catherine Pangonis. Um, I am so enamored with the way that this book looks. I think that blue and gold together are very aesthetically pleasing. It's got the beautiful pomegranate on the cover. Um, uh, and... Uh, you know, again, popular history, it's about medieval history. I know very little about the Queens of Jerusalem, so Queen Melisande, um, Queen Sibylla, uh, it does talk about Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine, um, who I am very familiar with, but um, I'm just happy to pick, uh, happy to read this um, to learn more about uh, those Queens of Jerusalem. Um, and if you, if you do know me, you know that I tend to uh, pick up secondhand books and especially paper copies more than I do um, hard covers, but this is a new release that I, I really couldn't resist and the cover's just so beautiful. So yes, I'm looking forward to reading this. Um, and I'll just get the third and final medieval book out of the way. Um, uh, so that was Queens of Jerusalem. So this is Queens of, Queens of the Conquest by Alison Weir. Um, I've never read anything by her, which uh, seems unusual considering the amount of popular medieval history that I digest, um, but I thought I would give this a go. Um, I found this um, found this online for, for a good price, so why not? So this is about Matilda of Flanders, um, William the Conqueror's wife, um, the Empress Maud, otherwise known as the Empress Matilda, who I have read quite a bit about. Um, so I imagine it's just going to be about, uh, uh, yes, the, the struggles of, of the women who, um, the, the queens behind the, uh, uh, the Norman conquest, sorry. <laughs> uh, so uh, this is quite big. I don't know how many queens she's actually going to talk about. I'm sure it's just more than those two. Um, so I imagine if there are quite a few characters in here, then uh, there won't be that much discussion on each. Um, that doesn't surprise me. Um, it's it's very rare to have a lot of textual evidence on a woman in in the medieval era. It's normally just about uh, the kings, but uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure she'll do a good job of uh, explaining explaining as much as she can and interpreting the events um, from their perspective. But yes, so that's Queen of the Conquest, uh, England's Medieval Queens by Alison Ware. Um, so those were the medieval books that I've picked up. Um, I've got two, two other books that I'll mention. And 
Uh, this book I only picked up this past week and it's called A Short History of Humanity, How uh, Migration Made Us Who We Are. And this is by Johannes Krauss and Thomas Trapp. And I picked this up because one of the books that I did read recently and um, I've done a review for is The World Before Us by Tom Hyam. Um, so Johannes Krauss, he is the director of uh, the archaeogenetics department at the Max Planck Institute. So a lot of the specimens um, that uh, are uh, that we try to obtain DNA extracts from uh, pass through his lab in at the Max Planck Institute. So um, I'm expecting quite uh, a lot of um, interpretation from him. A lot of um, I'm sure he's you know he is one of the the, the renowned the world renowned um, experts on on archaeogenetics so i'm expecting some good things from this book about human migration not just about um homo sapiens but uh he talks about homo erectus neanderthal neanderthals the denisovans um and a lot more recent um examples as well so the varna culture and the pharaohs Sorry, that's recent for me because if you're familiar with me, my my expertise is the Middle Paleolithic. So Neanderthals, um, you know, which are over 300,000 years old. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that um, and uh, reading what he has to say about how DNA can form us about uh, migrations in the past. And then the final book that I want to mention, and uh, I'm quite pleased with myself because I am branching out a not into um, just fiction I, I don't read that much fiction but this this is a topic or a genre that I don't read at all and that uh, well not that much I think I've probably read maybe three horror books in my life um, so this is about uh, this is called American Supernatural Tales and this is a Penguin Classics book edited with an introduction by S.T. Joshi um, so this is a collection of short stories. So, um, these are, these are stories that I can easily digest quickly. I don't have to read this in one sitting. I can just read whichever short stories I, I want to. Um, I, but I've been watching a lot of booktubers who do have an interest in horror. Um, and I'll put the links in the description and uh, because I'm panicking now, I can't remember their name. So I'll, I'll include them in the description. Sorry. But anyways, I've been reading. Um, I've been watching a lot of um, YouTubers who do like uh, horror. So they've inspired me to pick up something new, um, which is the point of BookTube, isn't it? You want to share what you like to read and hopefully along the way you'll you'll pick up. Um, you'll be inspired to read things that you don't normally gravitate to. So, uh, yes. Uh, straight off the bat, I'm sure that I'll be interested in reading um, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Washington Irving. Um, my husband's a huge fan of H.P. Lovecraft, um, and there's a short story in here that I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll read for the sake of, of him. Um, there's some Shirley Jackson. I do like Shirley Jackson. I've read some of her short stories. Ray Bradbury. Um, so, you know, a lot of well-known American authors. There's even Stephen King in here. Um, so yeah, I, I do look forward to reading some short stories and I'll, uh, probably read these before I go to bed. Hopefully they don't scare me. Um, but yes, anyways, uh, those are the books that I've recently picked up over the past month. I would consider this to be, um, a very toned down book haul for me, considering that I have been to the bookstore probably three times in the past four weeks. Um, and, uh, but I, I suppose on the flip side, I have picked up a lot more hardcovers and new releases as well, which I don't normally do. But um, I was really giddy when I saw them and, and couldn't resist or uh, wait for the paperback versions. But um, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed those. Maybe you might pick those up. Uh, but until next time, BookTube, have a great week ahead. Bye.